It's patreon.com slash house of decline. What you get? Extra comics. A daily comic every day. For $3, you go up to $5, you get extra weekly podcasts. Go up to even $25, you get commissions from me, the man himself, Alex. It's crazy. You can ask me to do anything within reasonable limits. Uh, and so, yeah, just go to patreon.com slash house of decline for all that wonderful extra stuff. Also, make sure to buy prints at store.houseofdecline.com. Also, more merchandise coming soon. So, let's get on with the episode. Without further ado, as always, we have Steven. Hey, how's it going? And uh, coming in from the uh, wonderful American area is uh, Donna. What's up? I'm in a U-Haul in a parking garage. (laughs) The most American things of all time. Apple pie and sitting in a hot van. Yeah, you're our American guest. Uh, yeah, we, St- we, Steven's American. We're but. not letting uh, Donna crack the window because of sound quality issues. It's, I believe <laughs> it's 110 degrees in there. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's plants wilting. They've got a plant in the background that's wilting. It's dying. But yeah. it's, all, it's all in the name of podcasting, which is why we're here today. We're here for a really special... Uh, episode. I uh, can't wait to get started. Um, but Donna, what you you are you are a podcaster yourself? What is the name of your show, and and what do you guys do on it? That's right. I'm a long term uh, artist, Stephen. Four <laughs> years on the job. Uh, I, I co-host a show called Radio Free Tote Bag. Yeah, a show with a name that tells you nothing about what the show is, <laughs> but maybe that makes people ask and look it up. That was my strategy. We do dating and relationship advice, uh, kind of like Love Line, except where we're not pieces of shit like Corolla and Doctor <laughs> Drew. Yeah. We're pretty cool. Uh, Here's it's the all... thing: what you gotta do, what you gotta hear. That's my Adam Corolla impression. I even <laughs> well, the thing about Adam Corolla, he women really are had... bitches. He Here's had... the thing. <laughs> is women are fucking bitches. He has it out for the Armenians in like a weird, targeted, racist kind of way. Like Really? Yeah. Yeah, most Loveline shows are him saying bad things about Armenians. I hate the Armenians. They're Just all over thing. L.A. Yeah, a weird yeah. guy, yeah. And it's, it's good that you're not that. <laughs> no, and, and also, you know, we don't... Uh, we don't bring in like disgusting medical doctor bullshit like Dr. <laughs> Drew. Uh, we are both, we have no qualifications other than, uh, I don't know, I'm hot and I've been on a lot of dates. That's my qualification. Hell yeah. We take we take listener questions though. We got like a question box people write into and then we have guests on and they help us answer their questions. We've had Alex on. We're going to yeah. have Steven on. I, I want to be on. I would love to be on. Uh, we, really? uh, <laughs> Please ask me to come on. <laughs> we had John McAfee and his wife on before he died <laughs> at the beginning of the pandemic. Have you heard that's maybe a hoax? He's maybe alive? He had the whole whacked tattoo Bitcoin nonsense, and he was like, hey, if I die, it's not real. Yeah. But, uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. Motherfucker was in so many different jails. He didn't answer any questions. We just kind of let him rip. Mm-hmm. Uh Wait, and you really had John McAfee on the show? Yes, we had John that, and Janice McAfee, his, that's, his a, that's an amazing... How did you... What's the story of you getting John and Janice McAfee? It was a complete accident. Uh, so, this is right before the pandemic. I was in one of the worst depressions of my life, and I was nocturnal. I was staying up until about 6 in the morning every night, and I was trying to different sleep medicines to try to make that not happen, uh, and that didn't really work, but it did put me in a great, weird headspace to do guest outreach and just say, <laughs> people messages like hey, it's 4 a.m you want to help us save people's relationships i can't yeah. sleep ever uh but I, I saw on like reddit or something a post that was like hey john mulaney will do your podcast if it's been around for more than a year and i thought that's a famous comedian mm-hmm. that'd be awesome and so i messaged in you know this fucking ambient uh sludge headspace I was in completely forgot about it and then like two weeks later get an email from a Janice McAfee and like John would <laughs> Janice love to do Mc- your show and I'm like who the fuck is Jan oh fuck it's John McAfee and so he's Wait, doing you a thought bunch- he was John Mulaney I thought he was John Mulaney until I got that email <laughs> and so I talked to Audrey and I'm like this guy's kind of an evil dude I can't imagine like we're a comedy show. We're fucking goof asses, but we give sincere advice. Like I, yeah. I care about the people who, who write in, and so I'm like, can we ethically 
do this is this cool and she's like fuck it we're getting like 100 listens a month let's get some motherfucking clickbait going <laughs> uh, and so like pod damn america had them on around the same time all these different fucking like left podcasts had them on and they all kind of fucked with them a whole bunch but we were like we want to know about this relationship because the the wife uh he got out of jail he he met a uh, a sex worker on the street in like miami within the first day like just walking out of the processing facility or whatever the fuck and then they like got lunch and talked for several hours and then they got married and she was like on the lam with him like with the belize authorities going after them they were on like a boat in the middle of the fucking caribbean for so long oh yeah so we're like, hey, have her on. Talk about your relationship. Yeah, there's how no do you way... keep it together? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what there's... secrets do the McAfee's have? <laughs> it's just it's for like... spicing up a long-term relationship. Getting extradited is a spice. Is spicing That's it big. up in the bedroom? Yeah. That's big. Getting chased it's... by uh, people in cars trying to kill you. That Absolutely. Kind of yeah. You you will have the best sex of your life <laughs> when you people have to. Say, I mean, <laughs> people say relationships are a lot of work, but. When you're, when I feel like when you're on the lamb, that's kind of the work is being done to you, you know. Right. So that's kind of like taking the easy way out. In my <laughs> yeah, as I'm long losing, as you don't get captured, you're uh, you're doing great. Your relationship is a success as long mm-hmm. as you don't get caught. I'm losing yeah. a little respect for John McAfee, honestly. You know, I had so much before. <laughs> yeah, what, what did, <laughs> it was an amazing. Well, that, the, the antiviral antivirus, software, the amazing anti- software. Yeah. Let's <laughs> just praise stuff. the software. Right? Great stuff. <laughs> it's like your old friend, you know, on a '90s computer. You see the virus yeah. software, you feel well, safe. Well, the other guy, the other guy, noted comedian Jim Norton is the <laughs> Norton antivirus guy, and he's doing good. Right? <laughs> That's him. That was yeah. the guy. Yeah, That's this is how guy. we made his bones initially. How he got his uh, <laughs> seed money for stand up. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't Opie and Anthony. It was... No, yeah, that was all a front for the Norton antivirus software. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, nobody could uh, the OP the OP antivirus software <laughs> 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 didn't really take up. Uh, <laughs> It just yelled at you and then got fired for being racist. No, Anthony got fired for being racist. What did Opie get fired for? They got fired for, well, they got taken off the air because they broadcast a couple having sex in a church. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, I'm remembering this. Everything I know about them is from Street Fights Shocktober coverage, if y'all have Mm -hmm. ever listened to that. That's where I, I know have, everything yeah. about Shock Jocks, except for Love Line. I actually guessed it on their Love Line episode, uh, but I, I had a little bit of an anxiety attack because it was early on and it was a big show, and so I don't think yeah. I was very good. <laughs> oh, they've been on our right. show a lot. They're good dudes. Oh yeah, we love uh, we love Brett and Brian. Recently, the recently split Brett and Brian. But, yeah, uh, that was a bummer to see, but. Eh been going for fucking over 10 years now i think oh yeah and they're really the start of all this like podcast stuff if like the, if like the chopos inspired uh, millions of people in their basements saying hey i could do that yeah i could, I could do that <laughs> yeah then you know where did the chopos come from they come from street fight that's that's the it's direct wild. forerunner and you know uh, love that best love to brett hope brett's doing well out there but yeah. uh, we'll continue to listen to street fight with brian absolutely uh, so yeah, just you sound like you've had. So when, just when McAfee was on the show, what, what I would, well, of course, listen to the program. We're every we should encourage everyone to listen to that episode because I'm sure it's a, uh, I mean, it's just interesting to hear this uh, strange, strange person talk about their life. <laughs> what was it like? It's fucking wild. Uh, we loved Janice though. She was like just a sweet, wonderful, funny person. We were like <laughs> shit. You know, we kind of wanted to come into this like, we'll keep like a reporter's detachment from things. But talking to her like, damn, this lady's the sweetest. We we like her. I hope she's not committed any murders. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's not <laughs> she implicated has. in this. Because <laughs> she's just uh, she was a nice lady. But this but, was the early pandemic. I was living in Portland. I was like driving back from there with my girlfriend at the time, uh, all the way back to Cincinnati, across the fucking country. Oh, my God completely forgot we scheduled the interview and we were staying at a hotel in the middle of nowhere colorado uh and audrey we we're supposed to leave get back on the road the next day and audrey texts me is like hey we have the uh, mcafee interview tomorrow <laughs> McAfee i'm like interview. fuck dude it's april 2020 like i don't know what the fuck is going on i'm having all 
these like panic attacks and shit from just trying to get home and not knowing what the fuck's going on with the pandemic. Uh, but kudos to the girlfriend at the time because I was like, hey, uh, what if we stayed in bumfuck Colorado another day on account of I got to talk to John McAfee, <laughs> antivirus mogul <laughs> and potential murderer. And she was like, hell yeah, we got to stick around for that. Yeah. So absolutely. this was all in this hotel. One of the most surreal experiences of my life. It was fucking bizarre. Mm-hmm. So did the did the pandemic kind of um, like make things better for you mentally, like it did for most everyone else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very stable now. We're on the on the straight and narrow. No, I don't know. I had a I had a fucking like year of unemployment at the beginning, and that was fucking me up for a while. Mm-hmm. But kind of just but the the unemployment benefits were like actually enough to get by on, which yeah. they mm-hmm. typically are not. And so I was in a place where like. I could go through a depression wave and then be like, oh, fuck, I'm out of it. Okay, what did I do that worked? What didn't work? And then kind of trial that again for six months. So that was like a hellish roller coaster, but I did get a lot better at dealing with the panic attacks and uh, and depression and all of that. So I'm doing pretty good Hell now, yeah. I'd say. That's I'm in good. a U-Haul recording a podcast. I'm doing <laughs> fucking amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm in the same apartment. I, I I had to quit my job because I was having freaking panic attacks as well at my work. Uh, and, you know, over the course of that time. But if I hadn't done that, I would never started doing these goddamn cartoons. Damn. And, you know, now I'm meeting so many wonderful cartoon people. Out there. So sometimes, you know, you got to break yourself down in order to get better. Well, weirdly, yeah. so McAfee, I then messaged uh, fucking Jake Flores from Pod Damn because they had sure. him on. I was like, hey, we had McAfee on too. Do you want to come on our show? He came on. Then we went on their show, uh, had like Patak and, and Anders on as well. Mm-hmm. That kind of connected us with the Street Fight guys. They connected us with like some, uh, fuck, who the fuck else we had on? Balling Out Super, Patak does from that show. We sure. kind of just like networked, oh, fuck, we know this person. Neither of us were on Twitter before. So we started picking up like yeah, decent have to be size, on goddamn mutual. Twitter, yeah. <laughs> do to, to message people. Yeah. And I don't know how to fucking tweet. I just talk about like birds and uh, post thirst traps sometimes. That's Absolutely. That's what you have uh, to do. If I could post thirst traps, uh, I would do that. <laughs> but uh, anytime hey, you I can. I, you just gotta I, believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is true. You just have to. But I don't believe is the primary uh, thing. But I would rather be, you know, because that's sort of a, a tra- I, I want to be wacky looking. I, I see myself as yeah. sort of a goblinish figure. But I, <laughs> I, I, I promote that lifestyle. I sort of want to be dumpy looking. Where is the song for the dumpy looking man? <laughs> it's, 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 that's right. Yeah, where are the ballads for dumpy looking Alex? <laughs> and I take great pride. I take great pride in that description. I think that's half the reason why I named my musical project Jack Dump yeah. is because <laughs> I appreciate where's the love for the dumpy looking man, you know? It's true. Well, it's Dad, an untapped market. Dad yeah. bods came into vogue briefly. Um was yeah. that was that pre pandemic? Yeah, I yeah. think that was pre-pandemic. Like, but yeah. 2019, when people say like, dad bods, you know, who are they talking about? You know, right. Leo I'm, DiCaprio, who's I'm, a millionaire. Elon and, Musk. Does he have a good body? He's kind of... He, he, no, he, can, he, can, he can get it toy. He can get it toy for a role. Yeah. Like, he, he, he looks pretty trim. He can get it toy. He can yeah, get cut it, up. Yeah, for... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio is fucking shredded in this movie, okay? He's... <laughs> You won't believe how fucking fucking shredded Leah. I've never seen anybody obsessed over how shredded you, Leah. Have is. you guys talked on the show about his relationships? <laughs> I think it with the whole thing of him switching to like the next twenty five year old yeah. or whatever fucking creepo shit motherfuckers doing. Yeah. I feel like we commented on that recently. Dane Cook was the big one for us though. We yeah. talked about that like from the get four years yeah. ago. Age Friend of the show, you. Dane Cook. <laughs> this fucking child bride. Jesus uh, Christ. Also the plastic surgery, you know, I don't not to denigrate plastic surgery, but Dane Cook got some interesting plastic surgery. Yeah, that, <laughs> what, more of a so mega blocks plastic than a Lego plastic. Yeah, surgery. a little bit off brand. Got a little Not puffy, great. you know. Uh, he's looking like he's looking a bit like uh, Mickey Rourke. He got the Mickey Rourke plastic <laughs> surgery, which is I like how Mickey Rourke looks. Actually, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, but, it fits uh, him. It yeah. does not fit Dane. Yeah, but. he's got a really big head. Now. His, his face is very puffy now. He looks like he was stung by bees. Yes, eternally yeah. stung by bees. I think that's kind of happening to John Hamm. Um, 
in some recent commercials, John Ooh. Hamm has been looking puffy, but I'm not allowed to comment on looks. Hi, I'm John Hamm, here for bees. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing an advertisement for bees. Uh, I'm not allowed to comment. My wife says I can't comment on looks on the TV, so I don't. I try not to say if John Hamm looks puffy, I don't say anything. You don't say if he yeah. looks puffy. You're not trying to comment on appearances, because what if somebody was mean to you about your face? That's right. That's right. Yeah. And maybe it's maybe it's, maybe we shouldn't comment. I mean, I don't know. I guess I, I was thinking, hey, he's a celebrity. I can say mean or catty things about yeah. him. But I, I well, guess I was not, actually, you know? I had this experience once. I was I was with a couple friends in a at a bar, and we were making Ben Shapiro short jokes. And another right. person, you shouldn't make Ben Shapiro short jokes. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll just make Jew jokes. Because <laughs> I, I can. I can. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that that is an interesting thing, a, a strain of thought that uh, you can't make fun of phys- someone's physical appearance because it's generally base or, like... Uh, but sometimes well, it's very hard to resist. Like when that Elon yeah. Musk shirtless photo yeah. came out, I was like, oh, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> well, that's no, the thing. No, I shouldn't, but it's just so freaking so, weird, man. <laughs> so many of us, so many of us, like, are making fun of Elon Musk while also looking a lot like Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah, having the big Optimus Prime torso, <laughs> as I do. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus Christ! Well, no, that was I kind of I forgot about that. That's I a agree. fucked up looking. I agree guy. in general because, like, what, like, I'm seeing my kids start looking at magazines, and in magazines, like the bodies that are there that are presented are just the unobtainable, like, point zero one percent body fat, right. and you know, making uh, making light of other people's appearances, even if they're famous and they can afford plastic surgery and they could afford the time to work out constantly and have a personal trainer and only eat egg yolks or whatever (laughs) um that's sort of why i would you know make a comment like that because i'm annoyed with their ability to do that when everyone else everyone else is being told you have to look like this while also you have to sit in your office job for 12 hours a day Mm -hmm. it's impossible so um, it's kind of a kind of a difficult thing to not want to make comments like that. But uh, when it comes to Elon Musk, though, he's a he's an evil guy. Yeah, but is it For okay sure. to do it if they're evil? <laughs> that, that's not. That's, that, yeah, we've had that debate before. I mean, where do you yeah. land on that, Dono? If someone's evil, can you use under underhanded or or does the means justify the ends when the person? Yeah, evil? it's a tightrope. Because I don't know, I had all kinds of self-confidence issues earlier in life. And it, it sucks to hear people like commenting on stuff like that, even if it's not directed at you, where you're like, ah, fuck, but I'm like that. Yeah. And so yeah. that's that's some weight on one side of the scale. But on the other side of the scale, these are the most fucking evil people. <laughs> some of the most evil people who have ever existed. And there yeah. is something, like, you, and you can't touch them because they have more fucking money than God. There's mm-hmm. really nothing you can do to, like, remove them from, from power short of... Uh, uh, means that we will not talk about on yeah, the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whoa, whoa. But so there's there's something like nice though. There's something satisfying about like you have built. You're the wealthiest person in the world, and you still can't make yourself not look like that. You piece of shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's hard not to. Yeah, and I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you have sent <laughs> sentenced mill- thousands of people to their early deaths. You have cooed countries. You have. You know, a destroyed infrastructure. You are contributing to this massive malaise, and even with all that, you know this. This is still the thing. You this know, is that what you, you present look to the like world. You um, fucking pasty. But even when they work on, ass, like as Audrey says, <laughs> <laughs> or like Jeff like, Bezos, who is actively working on it, but it's still not working out. You know, it's no, still not mm. totally. All the HGH is not. You can buy all the HGH in the world. And it's not going to solve your problems. No, still looking like a fucking Fury Road, uh, whatever the fucking little minions were called in that yeah. movie. Bald Look, motherfuckers. Uh, I would say the Doof Warrior, but that's the guitarist. I know the guitarist in Fury Road is the Doof Warrior. And he's uh, cool. Nux. That Nux. was the, the bald. Yeah. A real kind of gang, like swole, but in an upsetting way. And not yes. like an intimidating upsetting, just like, what are we doing here, man? Your body yeah. wasn't supposed to look like that. You're not meant to be a hunk. You're Leave not the hunk you. into the real hunks, you bald <laughs> piece of shit. That's what I would say to him. Uh, some words for Nicholas Holt. Uh, some some kind words for Nicholas Holt of skins. 
Remember he- Skins? <laughs> oh, fuck. I forgot about that shit. I did watch that. <laughs> that was a I- weird show. That was an early show in the teens fucking genre, which, yeah, you absolutely. know, Euphoria has bloomed into that, which, which I'm always uncomfortable with, you know, because I consumed Skins yeah. when I was a teen, and I was like, oh, that's this is sexy for me, and then but then I saw adults watching it as well. I was like, oh no, this is bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I have a mustache. I feel I don't feel like I'm supposed to be watching this right now. <laughs> oh, I work my. in an office. I don't Do know, you I have any euphoria up. opinions? I did. I did watch it per a friend's recommendation. Maybe just the first season. I'm a sucker for teen dramas. Like sure. I did love Skins, uh, Sex Education on, on Netflix. I yeah. loved the first couple seasons of that. I don't know. Part of that is just like the the bullshit, low stakes dating type stuff around then. And yeah, I, yeah. I also kind of had pretty chaotic, fucked up teen years. And so there's something of like, ah, that's fun to. Uh, see i don't know a show kind of made of that and be like yeah you know that reminds me of the time like that i blacked out and bad things happened or whatever the fuck <laughs> so you had a euphoria like high school experience because my high school experience was spent mostly in the fetal position watching simpsons reruns <laughs> mm. yeah that's wow really me too <laughs> yeah <Damn. Hell> yeah <laughs> I did have part of that, but I also had like a uh, we're sneaking out in the middle of the night and getting drunk with my my fake ID that uh, I lived out of the country for a bit in high school. I lived in Venezuela for the first half of it. And so my friend and I edited my old ID from there and like changed our names. I was like Johan Corbinian of Vald Ortiz was my, was my full name. I, I still remember. Uh, but we like copied it and a friend printed fake, so we put it on there. I said we were 23 and we were 17, and we are like in, in Ohio, we'd go out to the, the gas stations like <laughs> Where as they far away as possible. They wouldn't clock you for not being an no. Ortiz, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking put the ID down, put the beer on the counter, and they'd like, They'd check the idea or whatever and try to talk to me, and I'd just be like, oh, uh, don't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no English. <laughs> but they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, of course you're here in Milford, Ohio, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, why not? <laughs> it uh, worked, though. And were so you just totally it. silent, or did you ever, like, fake a, <laughs> a Venezuelan accent? <laughs> I knew that would botch it, because my... <laughs> I speak reasonably good Spanish, but my accent was like I sound white as fuck. You know yeah. I'm American as soon as I, I start talking, so I didn't like I, I didn't try it too well. I was just kind of as few words as possible. Mm-hmm. I had one time I was uh, I played rugby, and uh, I didn't have any sense of style, and so I wore like an Irish rugby jersey all the fucking time in high school, and so I'm doing the whole buying the beer with the fake thing. And the cashier, and usually they don't try to talk to you after I give like a, oh, like no English, whatever. She like, she's like, oh, did you win? And I'm like, what? What? And she's like pointing to the j- jersey, the Irish rugby jersey, when I am putting down a Venezuelan IT, pretending I don't speak English. And she's like, did you, did you win? Like your game, as if that was my fucking uniform. But I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take the beer and leave. <laughs> Were, were you as so you weren't playing it up you weren't you weren't buying only like uh south american brands of beer or something no, like that you no. weren't buying or just like latin american brands of beer you were buying aha i in order to keep up this ruse i will buy yeah. Tecate. so they won't <laughs> they won't figure out i will buy corona so they will <laughs> right. keep more in line with this persona i have adopted <laughs> Um, I did have a, a cashier who was Costa Rican once. I was at like a beach or something picking up stuff, and he looks at me, he just starts fucking laughing at me. And he's like, I'm not going to take this, but like, you're in no fucking way. Is this real? You're not fucking white piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no you're not uh, there. You should, you should, you could have said, you, no, I, I'm a white Venezuelan. Like, Louis C.K. is a white Mexican. Yeah. I I that, German that ancestry. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how we ended up down there. Pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not my problem. <laughs> um, do you think there is a lot of minions in Argentina? There are a lot of minions in Argentina. and uh, Absolutely. Uh, who escaped with the Nazis, you know. <laughs> they, I mean, I think I think canonically the minions were like frozen during the Holocaust, so they didn't assist with the Holocaust. But 
Is that legitimately? Yeah, no, there what is the in, in, in in the in the minions mythos in the minions legendarium. Mm. Uh, the minions were frozen during uh, the the Hitler years, but you know, just because they. <laughs> They did that, you know. D- they probably helped out with apartheid, you know. Oh, they were, definitely. They were definitely there. <laughs> there's some minions in Israel right now, you know. Wait, so were the minions in World War One? Uh, I don't know if the minions in World War One. They were in the Napoleonic Wars for sure. Okay. And they were helping Napoleon, who I guess was they yeah. saw as a big villain at that time. But that's sort of debatable. Yeah, you know, I it, guess. It, <laughs> World War One, they'd just be the minions of, like, the ruling families? Because those are just kind of the... There wasn't, like, a clear bad side, right? It was yeah. like, hey, we own all these different countries. We're going to have our people kill each other for some reason, even though we're all fucking inbred and related to each yeah. other. The and Habsburg so I guess the, minions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a minion yeah. with a, a Habsburg jaw poking out of the fucking, like, pill silhouette. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, how do they breed? Is like, do they? Because presumably, a there's question. a limited amount of minion. I guess they're immortal. According, they they seem to be immortal beings, according yeah. to the uh, lore, the deep minions lore. No minion funerals that we've seen yet. No, yeah, no, no big lineups to the minion funeral. Welcome to, yeah. Welcome no to the in- minion catacombs below Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Some drunk American students steal a minion skull and use it as a bong. You know? It's a, it's a, it's a minions jokes. That's what you came here for. What's yeah, the I'm, wonderful I'm, minions joke? I'm frantically googling minions so I can <laughs> take part in the in the banter. Confirm I'm... this deep minions look. But it's one thing I will say. It's amazing their longevity, the staying power of these fucking little. Because Rise of Gru made a bunch of fucking money at the box office. Oh, yeah. It's still going strong, this this Despicable Me franchise. This incredibly marketable little weird guy that they made. And it's amazing that uh, uh, Americans hate French culture, or they pretend to hate French culture. Because minions are like this a mm. French-ass idea. You know, this is, I yeah. believe the director of the Despicable Me movies is French. But in terms of this, be. like, little... Yellow homunculus that's yeah, constantly going. The banana, that, you know, the idea that Americans hate French is is is, is a canard because um, <laughs> they don't. They only it was only the Iraq War that caused that, and there was a large contingent of Americans who wanted to side with the French and the French Revolution, especially going back way back, and it was. It was really like a battle between the Anglophiles and the Francophiles. You know, the Hamilton was really into the English, and Jefferson was really into the French. And mm. kind of depending on who, which which uh, person you liked more, you would um, either be Francophile or Anglophile back in American history. And there's, I've always been really uh, heavily identified with French culture because I went to a uh, French-speaking school growing oh, up. Oh shit! In uh, it was in trailers in Texas. <laughs> uh, so mainly, I was, funny. mainly I was mainly terif- <laughs> I was like <laughs> I was, my pal Steven. <laughs> I was terrified of tornadoes because we were in trailers, and I was like, "This, this is not attached to the ground." Um, Sacre you, blue. Yeah, how do you say <laughs> "not attached to the ground" in French? <laughs> what can I? Add? Why? Why a French school? Like, how did that happen? Uh, okay, so my in parents. Texas. Now my parents saw the public schools, and they're like, "Well, these are all racist." And then they, saw the, <laughs> then they saw the private schools, and they were like, well, these are all racist, too. And so uh, then they found this French school, and my mom grew up in Germany for the first five years when my grandfather Shit. was working for Radio Free Europe, making sure that the Europeans did capitalism. And <laughs> um, she went to a French school in Germany. And learned French, and so she had, knew the French system, and decided my sister and I would go to a French-speaking school. So, until fourth grade, I went to this just only French-speaking school, and uh, after that, I went to a Catholic school run by Hungarian monks. So, <laughs> my whole schooling thing was really fucked up, and that's why I, when I go into a crowd, I, I have a panic attack, I think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're all talking about panic attacks this episode. Yeah, I think we all uh, sh- have we're a shared... We're all panicky. We all Hell have a shared yeah. bond of panic attacks. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we, I think we're getting a phone call. Do you hear that? Yeah, yeah, we're getting a, we're getting a phone... It is, it is a, re- a relationship call-in show. Oh, shit. Thank God yeah. I am here. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, yeah. Let's pick up this phone call. 
Hello? Hello? Am I on the air? Uh, yeah, you're, you're on the air. You're on the air with uh, Stephen and, and Dono. How, who's calling? Uh, uh, well, this is Mark from Los Angeles. I, I used to live in Boston, but now I live in Los Angeles. <laughs> How's it going, Mark? Thanks for calling into the program. What's, uh, what's going on with you out there? Well, you know, I've, I'm, very, I'm a very successful man. I've had a lot, of, a lot of stuff in my career that I'm very proud of. You know, I wake up at 4 a.m. every day, and I work out, and I go golfing, and, you know. But lately, I've been having a lot of gay thoughts, you know? Oh, no. Yeah, well, it started, you know, I was looking at my golfing buddies, and I was, I was noticing they were really cut, you know? <laughs> I was, like, I was really admiring how much time they, they were, like, spending in the gym and really working it. Uh, and, you know, I started thinking about them. I, th I started thinking about them in a sexual way, you know? I started, I started jerking off a little. I started, I, and when I jerked off, I thought of them. I thought of them playing golf. And, and I'm just, you know, for years of my life, I'm, I'm also a Catholic. So I've been having trouble resolving these gay thoughts. And, you know, our new pope, he's a little gay, you know, so <laughs> it's been a little easier. But um, he's a bit of a golfer. That's a true. A bit of a golfer. You know, yeah, he's, he is the golfing pope, as we call him, you know. My dream is to eventually do nine holes with the Pope, uh, you know, which, you know, that's also a gay thought that I've been having nine holes with the Pope, you know. So how, how do you reconcile? How do you reconcile these gay thoughts when you were a very successful Boston Catholic? I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a little steamed up by some glistening golfers. You know, Jesus was a golfer. What? And absolutely. He, uh... You know, he, he loved the he loved the nine holes so much. He got some put in his hands and feet as a tribute to the uh, to the game and to the greens. And okay, so I, I, I see what you're doing. Necessarily... You're making fun of the Lord, and I appreciate your relationship advice. But you know, I'm very serious about about the Lord here. So if you could keep the well, stigmata jokes down to a minimum, Mark, let's rule something out. Now you say you're having gay thoughts, but you're also using the word golf almost interchangeably <laughs> with gay. It. When, how old were you when you first went golfing? Um, well, it was it would have to have been during uh, during my uh, boys' golf trip. Okay, it would have been during the boys' golf trip that we all took uh, in Southie. You know, Southie, but go golf is huge down there. You know, it's it's we listened to Dropkick Murphys, which who when I was you, a kid in nineteen eighty eight. Who took you on this golf trip? That's my that's my first question. Who was uh, it? It would have to be we we did it ourselves. We raised money all throughout the neighborhood, oh. and you know it was all the boys. It was all the, just a bunch of tough tough young boys. And you know it, where I we were working out with cinder blocks. We didn't have weights, so we would attach uh. cinder blocks to bars and work out that way. Mm. And while we were doing that, we would impress people, and you know we would impress people with our cinder block workout routines. And they would give us money, and that's how we raised enough money to go on our boys' golf trips. Well, first off, uh, very admirable of you, Mark, to, to raise money in that way in order to get life experience. The, the school of hard knocks that is the, the golf course. Uh, we have a little test we could administer maybe that we use on Radio Free Toad Bag, my dating and relationship advice podcast. Uh, what is your favorite golf club? Uh, it would have to be uh, the sensuous three wood. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, an interesting choice. And now that is a club that shoots the ball in a relatively straight line, though, as opposed to something like a wedge that may indicate that you are, are not such a heterotype person. And so I'm thinking, again, perhaps this is not a, a matter of gayness, but simply a deep, deep appreciation for the game. <sighs> You've taken a load off my mind. Oh my god. You're you're right. The three wood is a straight shot. I'm I'm on the straight and narrow. I'm in there. I'm not curving. I'm not curving like some sort of queer. Oh, oh god, god, this is great. I'm gonna go home and fuck my wife immediately. <laughs> Click. Wow, that was great. That was great. Uh, what a good uh, what, guy. What an amazing guy. I bet he could have stopped nine eleven. I, I, yeah. I bet so, too. Yeah. I think we cleared things up for him, although I was hoping to ask him more questions about the golf courses of South Boston that I just pulled up on my phone. <laughs> I have a list of the top ten South Boston golf courses, and I was even thinking we could call one of them 
but um well we'll take in another caller i'm yeah. sure you know we have a high listenership in boston it's a so. call in show not a call out yeah. show yeah yeah, yeah. so let's hey, go the lines are wide open you know i bet we got a queue built up already yeah all right here we oh, have there's another one on the line hi hi am i on hey you're on what's your name uh my name is uh, uh clark <laughs> Okay. Hi, Clark. Um, I going, hi, I'm, Clark. I'm Clark from L.A., but yeah. I, I grew up in Boston, wow. and, you know, I was listening to your call with the other guy, and I'm having a lot of similar problems as the other guy, you know. Uh, I heard your advice about the golf, but it was, you know, I doubted it for a second, and I, I want to come back, but I'm interested to hear more about these golf courses of Southie. Oh, great. Yeah, well, there's the Boston Golf Club, of course. Oh, yeah, it's the got, Boston Golf Club. It's got four can't, stars. Can't forget about the Boston Golf Club. And um, here's, a one, here's a review from one Jack Smith. This club has really gone downhill. Filled Ooh. with politics, egos, and pretentious members, they do not serve the course. Overly <laughs> concerned with Golf Digest ratings and focus on making the course better for ratings, not for the members. Save yourself uh, the time and the money, and do not join. Golf Digest. Don't get me started on Golf Digest. You know, those, those fuckers, you know, everyone's, everyone's worried about the reviews they'll get. They're not interested in regular blue-collar Boston golf. You know, I would, I would suck anyone at, at Golf Digest off, I would. You know, that's what I would do. You'd suck them off? I, what did I say? You said you would suck yeah, them you off. you said you'd suck them off. Yeah, like, that's what we say in Southie, you know, I'm gonna suck you off, you know, uh, yeah, that's, you know, because uh, when you gonna... suck, you suck someone in the face, you know? Oh, right, okay. absolutely. Some golf terminology this there. This is some, so go yeah, yeah, some Southie a, golf terminology. Another uh, player of the game, another enthusiast of the, of the clubs and the little dimpled ball. What oh, absolutely. The I, flag I would... <laughs> with the little pennant. <laughs> Clark, I got I got a question for you here. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the woke culture that has overtaken Golf Digest? Have you felt that that's been a turn for the better or the worse? Uh, I think uh, honestly, honestly, and I might send you a curveball here. You know, I might you might be anticipating this. You from my rough and tumble accent, you might be thinking I'm some sort of some sort of cretin, some sort of non woke guy. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, the the increasing awareness, the increasing social awareness of Golf Digest has been the best thing about the magazine. It is the teen vogue of golf magazines. <laughs> Their political coverage is out of this world. It's incredible. Um, and the the thing that I don't like is their reviews, their snooty reviews. Like with their, their, their main reviewer, Hank Golfington, he comes from this long line of Golfingtons. He's not thinking about the people at the heart of the game. You know, the O'Leary's, the O'Malley's, you know, the Southie golfers. Absolutely. What a what a elitist scumbag there. I couldn't agree with you more, Clark. Absolutely. But, you know, that's, I subscribe, Jackal Bean and Golf Digest, the political ads. <laughs> those are the two. Those are the twin, those are the twin units of Mark. I mean, Clark. Clark is my name. <laughs> Um, what was the reason for you calling in today? Uh, was uh, you having any relationship difficulties? Well, I've been having gay thoughts. Oh. oh I've been having shit. gay thoughts about, like, similar to Mark was having gay thoughts. And, you know, I heard yeah. the advice. I heard the advice. But is there any... So golf is one way. But is there any way that you could, like, conceptualize it in terms of the filmography of a famous movie star? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> Mark Wahlberg? He seems like a pretty cool guy. Oh, like, great, is there I anything that you can... Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great golfer, golfer right here. Great golfer. Big dick. Big hot penis. <laughs> Huge. As seen in, in the movie Boogie Nights. That was a real, that was his real penis. You know, that was absolutely not a prosthetic that Paul Thomas Anderson made him wear while he was crying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, fuck. I'm trying to, th I'm not much of a movie buff over not here. Not much of so a I'm movie. Is there to... any way that you can tie this to the Transformers franchise? Uh, oh, featuring Mark Wahlberg or Boogie Nights with I Mark Wahlberg. There. I, I was thinking about The Departed, perhaps. Oh, yeah, it's a great Wahlberg. That's a great, he's <laughs> it's great in that. A, yeah. It's a great Berg right there. And, uh, hey, you know what else departs? Uh, the ball from the tee when you're hitting it down range on the course. <laughs> 
that's a, can you imagine the departed but if it's a, with golf instead that would be so fucking wicked awesome the only thing that's departing here is by, by this ball off of my five iron you wouldn't tee off with a five iron would you I'm and no i tee off with a three wood much golf. like mark yeah oh yeah Absolutely. And I think that reaffirms your heterosexuality as well, as we established with the previous caller. Okay, okay, but what if sometimes, what if sometimes, I like using a driver? Oh, well, what that's if even sometimes more straight, I'm a big fan it? of driver, of drivers, you know? That's even more straight. That's like a, that's like some kind of super straight type. Because the, the the wood's got a little bit of a curve to it, and so uh, not necessarily a bisexual sporting implement. Uh, there's still, you know, there's a little wiggle room there. There's a little curiosity, but the driver is the the absolute straightest of, of clubs. Oh, absolutely. The driver agree? is the Clint Eastwood of clubs is what you're saying. Absolutely. The this, this straightest among them. Absolutely. The Rock Hudson of clubs, yeah. Uh, see, I get what you're saying, but... Sometimes, sometimes I feel like even though I hit the ball straight, I really want to hit it curve, you know? I really want sure. to put a little spin on it. Really want to put a little jag on it. That's what we say in Southie Boston golf terms. Put a little jag on it. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar after my time golfing in the in the Boston area. Uh, what about putting a little slice on things? You know, you don't have to necessarily curve it up and down. What about a curve to the left or the right or whichever one slice means? Okay, so what you're saying is I should give in to the gay thoughts, is what you're saying. Uh, I wouldn't even think of it as giving in. I would think of it as just as you put your own spin on the ball by holding the club at a different angle or however you do that. It's not so much giving in to the thoughts as exploring your range of uh, emotion and, and, and interest. And oh. What could be more Boston than exploration, am I right? Well, I I never thought of it that way. I'm not gay. I'm just exploring. Yeah, you're just very Bostonian. Yeah, I'm like Ferdinand Magellan, the greatest <laughs> Bostonian of all time. You're you're a regular uh, you're a regular Sam Adams. Absolutely, I I Paul love Revere. his. Those are all Boston guys. All Boston guys. Cheers, the bar. Cheers. Yeah, you're a regular uh, uh, Prince William. They, from Boston, all Boston guys. I'm a regular Genghis Khan. <laughs> all these great Boston men. All these great Boston men. And you know what? They were all slicing. They were all That's slicing. True. They were all Absolutely. exploring. You know, Genghis Khan, great explorer, or as we call him in Boston, Genghis Khan. That's the best pronounce pre the, the the actual pronunciation. We care a lot about knowledge here in Boston. That's why we got so yeah. many colleges. Yeah, that's also why you managed to finally graduate high school at the age of 42. Let me tell you, I was feeling good vibrations that day. <laughs> oh, a Funky Bunch <laughs> reference. Excellent. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, good old Mark made some great music back in the day. Simply yeah. a, a man of so many talents. Absolutely. He was cut. He had a big penis. He felt the good vibrations. Uh, and, you know, everyone forgets about him beating up the Vietnamese guy. No one cares about that anymore. And, He's and a great fighter. <laughs> several black children he beat up as well. So, Clark, it's been a, a well, pleasure hey, talking wait to a you. Second, wait a second there. Wait a it's second there. It's been a pleasure right. talking to you, Clark. We unfortunately have a huge queue of callers. Really calls. So many calls we have to get to. So, adieu, Avita Shane, and goodbye. Okay. Call us again, please. I'll be slicing soon. I'll be slicing. Okay, Thank you well, for the advice. We got Hit another with the call. toilet flush sound effect. I wish oh, I had that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, uh, that guy, we're getting a lot of Boston callers today. Well, our yeah, phone lines are down in everywhere but Boston today, unfortunately. Uh, I see. It's a okay. tech thing, um, but we have another call coming in. Uh, we're going to have to pick this one up. Let's see who it is. Hello? Hello. Hey, welcome. How's it going, Hi. caller? Uh, it's good. This is Doc Wahlberg. I'm spooky, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> 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 I say, I, I'm like the Wahlberg brother that says a lot of fucked up stuff. Whoa. Dark. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the show. What kind of what kind of spooky stuff you've been up to recently? What's the what's the most twisted thing that's happened to you in the past week, perhaps? Is liking goth girls gay? 
<laughs> yep, it is, 100%. Actually, they scientifically proved that um, years ago, it was during the Breaking Bad uh, era of media, um, when they proved that Jesse Pinkman was, in fact, gay. Absolutely. Uh, this was done by scientist Dr. Drew um, <laughs> on his show, Dr. Drew Proves You Are Gay, which was a, <laughs> a well-known a well known artifact of the pre-Me Too woke era, 2008, yeah. 2009. Classic radio. Well, we listened to it all the time in Doc Boston. Because we were all very concerned with being gay, and we wanted to know how not to be gay. Yeah, and that, Absolutely. I think... Absolutely. You most remember his tagline from that show? He'd always say, hey, you either go golf or you go goth. It's one of the two. I'm Dr. <laughs> Drew. <laughs> That's what he would say. You, you all, Clearly, you are a listener of the what, Am I Gay or Not show. He's always saying this, and it's true. You know, you, you, it's kind of an either-or situation. You either goth or you golf... And now, Dark, it seems like you're firmly on the goth side. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, long, I've long had to accept this about me. You know, I took so many movie deals that compromised my artistic integrity. I'm a, I'm a movie star. I won't tell who I am, but I am a movie star. You're in the business. You're I'm in the, in the industry, business. I'm say. in the industry, what they say. But, you know, you take, these, you take these big movies with Michael Bay, and, you know, he's telling you to curve your ass on, like, a 45-degree angle. And you're like, I don't know, I'm sort of liking being objectified right now, but I'm sort of yeah. not. I don't know what I, I don't know how to deal with this. Um, but, you know, a lot of the roots of my gay thoughts are like Michael Bay commenting on my ass, saying he'd like to eat my ass, saying how right. crunchy my ass is. You know, he would say, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm doing my Michael Bay impression now. Oh, you, your ass is so crunchy. <laughs> Your ass is so crunchy, Doc Wahlberg. You know, that's what he would say. He does love saying that. Almost much, as much as Dr. Drew loves talking about whether you're goth or golf, but it's got to be either or. Absolutely. Uh, that was a big segment on the show, goth or golf, you know? Ass eating, though. Goth. You yeah, know, the, we can family The say. other thing Dr. Drew liked to do was just, like, wildly assume whether or not you were molested as a child. Um, yeah, really great strategy for dealing with people going through uh, difficult things and trauma. We always loved that about him. Absolutely. Yeah. Instantly bring up your, your patient's molestation in a very public forum. <laughs> yeah. That's great and, for mental health. And that's it's what really we did. cool that they uh, are now teaching, you know, uh, in, in psychological institutions, grad schools, all across the country, that the best way to reach patients is to place bets on whether or not their dad is still in their life. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I can tell you something as Doc Wahlberg. My dad is not in my life. It, it's a very oh, dark no. story of how we went out of it. What happened? Uh, he, he drowned in the You're pier because he, he, was, uh, he was eating too much taffy. And he said, oh, this taffy's so good. And, you know, we couldn't hear his cries for help because his mouth was filled with taffy. It was stuck, <laughs> his teeth were kind of stuck together. His teeth were stuck together. Uh, yeah, the salt yeah. water taffy, it was, it was funny because the salt water was entering his lungs. And he was like, ah, oh, no. Oh, no, Doc oh. Wahlberg, help me. And, you know, that's how I became very dark to begin with. You know, and that's why when I started having these gay thoughts... Maybe because, you know, I, I, I miss, uh, I have a father figure that's not that's, being... That's interesting. Dono, tell me if you agree with this. The, the death of a parent can often have long-lasting effects on a child's relationships. Sometimes they will seek out to destroy a relationship before it's really time for it to end because they want to recreate that sort of sense of loss that they feel is inevitable. Uh, do you have thoughts on that? absolutely and maintain some kind of control over exactly. it some kind of hey this is my decision nothing is being taken from me i'm deciding to to get rid of it i'm gonna switch to freshwater taffy from here on out <laughs> uh, what, this is you know this advice you're giving i don't need to control everything you know I don't it's need true. to be golfing and slicing, you know. I can just do what I want when I want. You know, there's no need to be judging myself so much. You don't. You can pick whatever club you want on the course and in your day-to-day -day life. No moral judgments. So you're saying I can be both goth and golf? I would I would say that. I and I think Stephen would agree. I think we're coming down against some of the Dr. Drew uh, um 
essentialisms, some of the, the Dr. Drew laws of the trade they were previously called. And we're going to break out of that binary. We're going to break out of the golf goth binary. Absolutely. But the beautiful spectrum in between. We're going to have, a, it would be super funny because the, it's the, the golf at night, you know. Who's oh, golfing absolutely. at night? These goths are golfing at all of the, you don't have these twenty four hour golf courses. Suddenly you're making revenue because of all these goth golf fans. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. I'm gonna open the goth golf south the southy golf course. <laughs> Everybody wins. You're wearing a vest, but it's black and red. It's got a <laughs> skull on it or something. Absolutely. You know, you're doing freaky god stuff. You're being Doc Wahlberg all over the place. You're wearing one of them, like, tam shanter type hats with the puffy ball on the top, but uh, Very instead golf. of a ball, it's a spider. <laughs> <laughs> what else could you be doing at the goth golf course? Maybe, uh, you know, instead of saying a hole-in-one, you say you get a spooky Roger or something like that. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that would catch on very, very well. Absolutely. Yeah, instead of the flat, the little flag that they have wherever the hole is, could have like a little right. skull and crossbones on it. That's Absolutely. you know, but they might mistake that for the pirate golf course because we already have a pirate uh, golf course in Southie. Oh. What did yeah. you do? Of the ten <laughs> golf courses in Southie, uh, we have the, there's the pirate golf course. Okay. There's My the uh, Wendigo golf course. That's a very specific one. You don't want to go on that one. There's the Designing Women Golf Course. You know, it's all Designing Women themed. Uh, themed golf was very popular in the 80s in Boston. I, I love the goth course, though. It's simply the, the water hazards filled with blood. That's always a delight. <laughs> Absolutely. The, but, it's you know, it's not blood. It's it's food color. Or maybe it is no, blood. You know, no, where no. are we sourcing? It, it's cow's blood, though, probably. Absolutely. This is a this is an ethical operation we, operation we have going on. It's not a birdie. It's a... What's a scary bird? It's not a birdie. It's, it's a, a raven. It's a raven. <laughs> it's a yeah. ra It's a it's a crow. It's a crow. It's or maybe a secretary eagle. bird. It's a, yeah. It's a it's, it's a, a spook. It's a bigger falcon. crow. It's a, <laughs> it's a jackdaw. I thought it is a oh a jackdaw. Those guys. <laughs> what if it was a thieving magpie? <laughs> That's, That's right. Albatross. I know classical music. I'm Doc Wahlberg. <laughs> And I know about golf terms. Mm -hmm. That's part of my expertise I bring to this relationship program, Dark, and I'm hoping we've been able to help you out here. Yeah, I, I think by we we we've been eliminating these goth golf binaries. We're coming Absolutely. we're we're gonna combine them together as golf. <laughs> what? Golf. golf. Golf And that's where we're going. <laughs> you know, and I think that's that's the wave of the future. That's we're gonna we're gonna love it. And, uh, you know, I'm very satisfied. I'm not Dark Wahlberg anymore. I'm Light Wahlberg. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm tipping. I'm on my, you know, everything is good. I'm going to go get a Hawaiian shirt and watch, uh, watch James Bond movies. Hell yeah. Maybe beat up a white person this time. Yeah, yeah. Piece. They deserve it. They deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have time for one last call, but... We may have to cut them short. It depends on uh, how long it goes. We have about eh, 10, 15 minutes left in our program today. Mm -hmm. So it's our last caller of the evening. Uh, let's see uh, who, who we have on the line. Hello. You are on um, the Relationship and Dating Show with Dono and Steven. Welcome. I am trapped in a closet right now. I oh, dialed fuck. any number with my nose. Please help me. Please help me. Please call the police. I'm being kept in Mark Wahlberg's house. Uh, okay, we will call the police, but you first have to answer correctly our questions for. Okay, that's fair. Okay, what is the name of Mark Wahlberg's new golf course? Oh, God, I heard him talking about this. I heard him talking about this with those Saudi nationals. He's making he's making the big Irish golf course in Riyadh. That's correct. Wow, yeah. well, which is amazing because he's not even well, he's not even Irish. He's some sort of German. It's true. Uh, kind of an honorary Irish, though. I, I I feel what you're saying. I'm trying to keep my voice hushed too, so we don't alert the don't. Wahlberg guard dogs. Yeah, he's been he's been calling he's been calling some numbers and you know asking if he's gay or not. 
Well, now, question number two, uh, and again, answer carefully here, uh, all of these questions for, uh, how big is Mark Wahlberg's penis? Yeah, it's average. You know, he, he talks a big game because of the whole Boogie Nights thing. But average. It's, uh, average? I've seen his penis a bunch, and, you know, he hasn't figured out I'm in this closet yet, so he's been walking around naked in front of it, and, you know, he's been whapping around his penis on his on his front thighs, and, you know, making he little... It? He whaps it, you know. And he goes, whap, 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 you know, when he, <laughs> when he first heard that song by, by Cardi B, he, they stole my intellectual property. I've been in this house for two years. It's been going yeah. whap, whap, Yeah, yeah, since, ever since that song came out, you know. And this is the first place you call. Uh, this is the first. He dropped the cell phone in oh, here at, in you distress. Hit you hit yeah. the redial. Okay. Yeah. I hate when my cell phone falls out of my pocket and into the closet. That happens all the time. He's got really big openings in his closets. Okay. Now, your third question is, how many primetime Emmy Awards has Mark Wahlberg won? Oh, God. Oh, God. Probably a lot. He's very talented. He's yes. very talented. Yeah. Uh, three. Very talented, ma'am. That's wrong. No. He's, God damn it. Uh, much more than three. Oh, but, no. But less than ten. Okay. Okay. That's good. You want to give it one more shot? One more shot. <laughs> one more shot. You've only got one shot. Do okay, not miss your chance can do this. to that... escape Mark Wahlberg's closet. Are you quoting the famous white rapper Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> <laughs> and his and his beloved funky bunch. Yes, absolutely. What is, what is the question I need to get out? I can't many, be I can't be subject many, to this. The anymore. question is how many primetime Emmys? Has Mark Wahlberg won? Oh, you want me to guess the? I don't. I don't fucking know, man. I, I, I can't see him. I can't see him. Oh God. Uh, 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 nine. Yes. Ding, 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 <gasps> ding. Thank goodness. Oh, you Will have you? one more question. Okay. Will you Sorry, call the police after over. that? Will you please call ding, the police ding, after ding, that? Ding. We will. We will call the police afterwards if you okay. answer this last one correctly. Okay. Uh, which national tragedies? Could Mark Wahlberg have prevented had he been there on the scene? Well, answer carefully. I think he absolutely could have prevented Kent State. Uh, wow. I to, so, oh no, he's just covering me. What's going on in here? Oh god damn it, my cell phone dropped into the closet again. It's you! <laughs> Well, he'll, he'll probably be fine. As, he'll call know. back. He'll you call know? back. You know, call if he back. really yeah. wants to. That's yeah. how Mark Wahlberg plays. It's, yeah. it's it sounds scary, but it's just all fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it's just like watching the Transformer movies. I was very scared by the Transformer movies. It uh, is scary. I don't like when one thing becomes another thing, and it, everybody's just okay with that. Yeah. Oh, I'm a truck, and <laughs> now I'm a goddamn robot, and now I'm yeah. back to a truck. Uh, no there you way. Go. No fucking way. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't handle that. Optimus Prime, I'm Negatus. Ne negative Prime. Negatus. Negatus. Yeah. Negatus Omega. Ne <laughs> What's the Pessim opposite of Prime? Pessimists. Uh, yeah, Omega? Pessimists? I don't know. Was He, he was called Megatron, but not Negatron, right? I feel like it should have... Yeah, I think you're right, but I feel like it should have been Negatron. That makes a lot more yeah, sense. Yeah, they had the Negaverse in... Uh, in uh, uh, Sailor Moon, that was something. Oh. There you go. But, uh, no, I think uh, they had Starscream as well. It's funny how, like, all the Autobots had, like, the happy names, but they... I guess Starscream is sort of a scary name, but it's a little as James scary. Adomian pointed out, it sort of sounds like a grand dame drag queen, you know. Starscream! <laughs> Get over here, Starscream! Yeah, the, the, the Transformers were, at least the, the Decepticons <laughs> were... <laughs> We're queer coded in a way. We love it, or perhaps the death rattle of a dying sun, a star scream. <laughs> oh no! Ah! That's what he That's sounded what like. They sound like when they I, supernova. Yeah. I didn't ever watch the old Transformers cartoon. Did you? Me either. Seemed yeah. like one of the movies. That wasn't really my beat, so to speak. You didn't like uh, Shia LaBeouf going, no, 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 And then for some reason in the in the Mark Wahlberg ones, they have like a long conversation about age of consent laws 
in Texas. <laughs> really? There's like, yeah, there's a significant portion Pretty of like one of the Mark Wahlberg Transformer movies where he's talking about uh, age of consent laws in Texas. Because huh. like, there's a character who's dating his daughter, and he's flummoxed. Like, I don't want anyone dating my daughter. He's too old to be dating my daughter. And then the guy says. He's, there's some like weird rule in Texas where if you're like 21 and 17, like the age of consent or something like right. that, yeah, it doesn't and they apply. discuss that yeah. in the movie or something. And there's like <laughs> lines of dialogue devoted, to, like they de- they didn't cut out. It was deemed important enough to be in the movie. Uh, I mean, that was I my favorite part of the Transformers cartoons that I did see was always the long, thoughtful discussion on age of consent laws. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're we're ve- that's what we're you know we're very cons- it's a relationship podcast, so we're going to talk about age of consent. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I don't want to go on this. I don't want to go yeah, on the libertarian route right now. I'm dating a 2007 yellow Camaro that turns into a big robot, uh, but I'm a I'm a nice 1998 <laughs> what a fuck a truck i don't know yeah. what else the fucking things turn into a pita built that's a kind of truck is that ethical you know what something get- else that transforms is the pita transforms into a sandwich sometimes it's true but what? it can also be like something you dip absolutely no it's not a sandwich it's, it's a pocket it's a well it's a it's like a piece of bread and then it, you can open it up Oh, we can get into sandwich discourse. Everyone loves we the could, is ex a sandwich discourse. Well, Something that's never really been talked about, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think anybody has tried to debate on which or what is what is a sandwich or not. Well, so a pita, yeah, a pocket, but there is kind of a top and bottom. They're just connected. Uh, what if you took like a turkey sandwich, though, and stapled the top and bottom bread together? Would that then be a pocket? No longer a sandwich. Uh, are the staples edible? For the purposes of this argument, we will we will assume the staples are edible. It doesn't okay, really matter. Right. Most of the time, when I get food, they staple everything together. Like, have you have you seen this in takeout? They'll put staples on the bag. I hate it because you That's open it up, the staples fall into the food. Yeah, it frustrates me to no end. Okay, so hey, you know, you got to get your staples in. You know, I your rice, like a your beans, remover. your staples. Whenever I get takeout these days, to get to carefully extract the staples so they don't fall into the the rice or the chicken tikka um <laughs> and on patreon.com slash house of decline if you subscribe you will get the house of decline patented staple remover <laughs> and you'll hear the end of our episode where we discuss the turkey pocket sandwich which is fascinating it's another extra 30 minutes of content but now it's time for plugs <laughs> donna oh, shit, what you got going yeah. on what you got going on in your life donna Oh, Radio Free Tote Bag. It's a show about relationships. You can listen to Alex. You were on our uh, Patreon episode. Patreon. I was on, I was on a Patreon RFTB. episode, yeah. We had some fun times. We were talking about... I remember a conversation about blue balls. Someone on the old disco- the Reddit relationships uh, good old was Reddit. talking about blue balls. And <laughs> the myth of blue balls. Yeah, mm. and, and that they were going to die if they did not die. <laughs> it, it couldn't be them jerking off. It, yeah. it would have to be having sex. No, yeah, so we got the main shows we do every week. Alex is coming back on. In a couple weeks on the main show, we answer listener questions on there. Hey, you got, like, heartbreak or something? Or, like, a kink you want to talk about? Write in. We're non-judgmental. Uh, and we, we do a pretty good job answering. Uh, and then the Patreon, like I was saying, is all is all Reddit questions. And so if you want to hear us, be a little meaner. Because we're <laughs> nice to our listeners, but we don't give a fuck about the scum on the bottom of the boot of the internet that is Reddit.com users. <laughs> Filth. Filth. But you love Google Marvel movies. I hate Marvel movies, and hence I am better than you. And I, I simply cannot tolerate you and your love of Marvel. Now, if you Google Radio Free Topic, nothing else is called that because it's a very stupid name that I came up with. But it was four and a half years ago, and it's stuck, and we can't change it now. And now I kind of, now I kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, but we got we got them podcasts every week. It's a real good time. We got cool guests. Uh, check it out that's the main thing at rftb pod on twitter post new episodes mostly at rftb dono i'm locked but if you request me maybe you can follow me and you can see my thirst traps (laughs) they're good they're good good stuff yeah all of the links will be available in the description of the podcast um i'm on their patreon now so it's patreon.com slash rftb 
but if you are lazy like me and you need to click something you can't type it in just go to the link in the description it's going to be there thank you so much for coming on the show Donna. it was an awesome time thanks for having me y'all this is the best time i've ever had in a u-haul i'm gonna give you all that honor <laughs> top of the list for me Excellent. never a better time in a in a ford cargo van i don't even know what this fucking thing's called but it's been wonderful all right have a great day y'all to tally ho or something 